I want you guys to know, man, I'm behind you 100%. That's why I give you the phone number also. Now, right. did you have the $3,000? Could you really afford it to sign up for the coaching program, or is it a stretch for you? Um, that was a little bit of a stretch, but, I mean, I have, uh, you know, I put aside a budget for my education for the year because, uh, you know, I believe strongly in education. You mentioned that before, the, your MBA uh, moniker there. And you, it's right. I mean, you're right. that you, you need – everybody needs to be educated in this, but you don't need to be so over-educated that you don't do anything. Mm -hmm. At one point, uh, the rubber's got to meet the road, you know. So, but um, – yeah, I could afford it, so. Okay. Now, again, some of the students on the line that listen are in the coach program, some are not. I, I still send emails to people just so they can hear this information. I really believe if they just read the letter and listened to you talk over the phone, hopefully that will be, again, the thing that turns on the light mm -hmm. and gets them to take some action so that they can start seeing some success. And I also have students that are on the line that have been with me that still feel they're not worthy. And man, that's one of that's one of the things that really eats me up inside. They tell they talk themselves out of success. Even though they go to the seminars, they get the books, and they're sitting there paying attention, they can't get themselves to take action on the marketing concept. So again, I'm emphasizing to them that hey, you just took the one part cold calling from banks that you really liked and felt that you could do, and put it in action, and bam, look what happened. Yep. <laughs> okay. Now, yeah, the, and it wasn't the first bank I was successful with, you know. So, mm -hmm. I think I wrote in the testimonial, persistence is the key, and that's true in anything you do in life. Yes. You know, you got to be persistent. And I just didn't take no for an answer. No. Okay. Next. No. No. Okay. Oh, yeah, we do, but somebody else. Okay. Next. And then all of a sudden, you know, as I mentioned in, in uh, my uh, testimonial there, or about the call detail, that uh, I don't know. I just right away, I don't know what it is, I, maybe with the right chemistry or whatever, I just established rapport instantly with this lady, and uh, she invited me to her office, and, and well, we, don't that, history. History. we don't talk a little bit about that, but I'm just, I got to, you know, I believe there's something inside that has to happen first before you can start seeing those outside results, because if the inside is giving these mixed signals, like, I'm not sure, it doesn't fit, I'm not worthy, I don't know enough, I need to go to the next seminar. These are mixed signals which causes confused minds. So if the mind and the body is confused, there's no way you can have this call or go see this person and have results. You've got to have everything in sync. And so you've got to believe in the program. You've got to be able to stand in front of a judge and jury and be able to sell it with conviction. And if you don't have that type of conviction, you know, you can always improve it each time out. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to be an expert today, but if you start talking day by day, by day, by day, by day, by day, you get better. And at some point, Marcel, everybody should be an expert because you put the time in. Again, it's like karate. When I was going to karate, I started as a white belt. I didn't know nothing about karate. All I knew is I had a desire because I wanted to be the next Bruce Lee. And, man, that instructor said, do 50 push-ups, I tried to do 50. If I did 30, I was okay with it. And I worked my tail end off. Same way with real estate. I looked at the gurus. I looked at them sitting up there in the front of the room talking about how their lives were exceptional and how they were doing things. You know what? I can do that. I can do that. I want to be like that. I want to be like them. I want to do what they do. I want to have the crowd giving me a round of applause. I see myself in my head. Success. And it's the same thing I do with real estate. I see myself successful in everything that I do. Now, I don't always get it my way, but I tell you what, it just seems like the universe lines up with you when you're committed. And that's what I see in people that are committed. They're being super successful. One of the things my client instructor taught me, always do the best you can and finish what you start. And now as I've gotten older, to the age of 49, doing my best, it's in me. Mm -hmm. And man, if you come up against me and you try to deter me and talk me out of my dreams, I'll mow you over because I just don't allow it. I finish things that I start all the time, all the time, all the time. I don't like to quit. I'd rather die than quit. So, again, I'm, I'm trying to motivate everybody on this call to up your game, to play the game all out. We're only here for a short amount of time. And if you want to pursue your dreams and be where you want to be financially, 
You can't listen to the media. You can't listen to people that are trying to talk you out of your dreams. You've got to be driven, right? Got to be driven. So, again, let's get back to the call. It's starting to feel like I got this burst of energy now, Marcel. You got me inspired. Again, I was telling these guys, if you're bank, that's your work. How are we going to run this? Am I just going to talk? Yeah, we're just talking. It's me and you, man. We're having a mono, mono, and I hope the students are getting the insights. There's nobody else on the line. They're not even going to be able to ask questions. Okay. I didn't want this to be disturbed. I want your flow. So if you feel like you want to jump in there, man, hey, Derek, okay, I'll, I'll be quiet. So essentially now, I'm going to go here. If you want to go somewhere else, that's fine. But let's say your bank has 20 notes in Colorado. Again, I have Scott and Jennifer from Colorado. Whereas this network that we have, i got students all over the United States that as soon as they say, hey, Marcel, we got 100 notes. we got 20 in Colorado. we got 20 in New Jersey. we got 20 out in Palm Springs. we got 20 in Los Angeles. Man, we got students that can help get that closed. Okay. And that's what I like about the network also. So, Very again. Good. And I'm open to that. So. Yeah, I know, and that's what I told them. I said, hey, look, Marcel is going to need some help. And, 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 and for students that haven't had much success with homeowners calling them or their ads being answered, don't give up hope because now Marcel has made a major, major improvement that's going to help you also. So, again, the network with us all striving to get better and better every day, we all benefit from your hard work. Again, let's talk about your bank now. How easy was to talk to the bank? I mean, the bank supervisor, did they ever tell you no to any of the questions that you asked, such as selling notes at a discount or anything? Did they ever give you any at all? Oh, yeah. The other banks that I wasn't successful with, uh, either they said they don't sell notes uh, or some other company is who they deal with or they had no clue what I was talking about. And, uh, and I called a couple of credit unions, but um, the credit unions are a little different, I guess, and, and they were more conservative, so they weren't really caught up in the subprime mess. So um, I said, okay, so I put credit unions off, I took it off the list for now. Um, but getting back to the banks, I would just call uh, the main number and ask for the loss mitigation department. And uh, when I would get there, I would you know, tell, tell them what I did. Uh, using t your uh, experience, Terry, your eight years uh, in business. And, uh, you know, just trying to get a feel for what they had available and if they were open to uh, selling notes at a discount. Uh, you know, I, I used the approach that, hey, we're here to help you. I mean, you know, you're, you know you've got a whole bunch of uh, non-performing notes, and, you know, my company buys notes across the country, helping different banks and financial institutions. So I felt comfortable with that line, and that's what I used uh, when I called all the other banks. And, uh, and the one that I was successful with, uh, <laughs> it was funny because I, I called the um, switchboard operator. It was a small local bank. Uh, I had no clue what a loss mitigation department was, so I asked for the mortgage department. Got the mortgage department, and uh, the fella, when I finally got a hold of him, um, he didn't have a clue what I was talking about, loss mitigation. So and I said, well, you're in the mortgage department, right? He said, uh, yes. And I said, well, so you have mortgages that you have people buying homes and they pay you per month? Said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, so those are your non those are your performing notes. Oh, yeah. Yes. And I said, okay. And then I said, maybe some of them are non-performing. And all of a sudden when I said non-performing, he knew what I was talking about. And he goes, well, let me tell you, let me get to the person uh, that handles that. Well, I think he, I think he said, oh, I know who, the, you know, that is or who I can, you know, get you in touch with. So anyway, um, I get to this uh, department. It's called risk management. And I said, oh, well, whatever. I'm looking for loss mitigation. So maybe they can, maybe they know what loss mitigation is and they'll get me to the right department. Well, it turns out that the risk management department at that particular bank, um, that was their loss management, uh, I'm sorry, loss uh, mitigation department. And... Um, and I spoke with a lady. She was very nice. Uh, uh, you know, chit chatted a bit. Uh, my office is located in the city where she used to live, so we had a little common ground there to talk about uh, the city here. And then uh, I just uh, started telling her about what I do. And uh, she, at the end of, uh, I forget how long we talked, maybe 15 minutes or so, and she said, oh, I'd like to meet with you and learn more about your company. And so I said, okay, great. And I got off the phone and I said, oh, man, now I have to go to work. Wait a minute, Marcel. She invited you to come to her bank 